Hi, and welcome to part two of my home lab setup. So I'm already RDP'd into the server here that we installed on the last video. So let me just open up the server manager here just so we can see that it is that same server here. Give it a little while to open up. There we go. So here we have it. We have the local server here. And we have our IP address of 172.30.123.8. So let's go ahead. And what we're going to want to first do here before we set up our Hyper-V um, server and everything on it, we are going to want to name the computer. This way we can set our address back to a DHCP address. Because um, yesterday when I set it to a static IP, um, I wasn't thinking, but this computer only has one NIC. Um, so we're going to set this to a DHCP just to be a little bit easier. But first, since we are already remoted in, I would still suggest doing this step like we did in the first video, just so you can um, RDP into the computer and then change the name. So let's go ahead and let's change that here. So to change that, you would just go into your local server here, which let me just bring that onto the screen. And then if you click on the computer name, and then down here, uh, we are going to go on change. And then here, you're just going to put in the computer name. Now, I like to give uh, somewhat descriptive names to my servers. Um, now, this isn't really a best practice. Uh, the best practices are kind of skewed um, every time that I look them up. Some people will say that you should name your server somewhat noticeably to what it does. Um, but that also opens you up to vulnerabilities when hackers um, hack your system. If they are able to decode your naming convention, um, then they'll know exactly what server is your directory server, what server is your Hyper-V hosts, and stuff like that. The other way is using pet names, which or like Greek gods or anything like that. But then when you have uh, some people leave the organization and new people come in, they'll be like, what does this Dante server do? It's not really descriptive. Um, it's just a random name. So unless you have a, a sheet somewhere that will tell you what Dante server is for, uh, which at that point, if the hacker gets a hold of that file or that piece of paper, you're kind of in the same boat. Um, so it's really up to your discretion. In our case, our network will not be available to the outside. So in my case, I'm gonna name it JP Hype 2019. So JP for Jacked Programmer, Hype HYP for Hypervisor, and then 2019 because it's on a server 2019 machine. So we're gonna click OK here, and it's going to ask us to reboot the server here. So we are gonna go ahead and we are going to close and we are going to restart now and I will see you when the computer is rebooted. All right, so we're back. The server is rebooted here. So now for our remote desktop connection, what I'm actually going to be using is I'm actually going to be using the computer name. So I just put in JP Hype 2019 here. We're going to click on connect. We're going to have to click on more choices again and use a different account. And we are going to put JP Hype 2019 backslash administrator and then put in the password like we put in in the setup. And we are going to connect to the machine and we are going to accept the certificate here. And this will bring up the server here. So let's just wait for the server manager to open up here. And there we are. Let's just zoom in here. All right. So in here, if we go on local server, we will see that the computer name has changed. Our address is still the same. So what we're going to do here, just to kind of fix this up real fast, just to give it a uh, chance to fix itself up here. Let's go here. Let's obtain a address and let's obtain the DNS server address automatically here. And let's click on OK and click on OK. 
Now this might disconnect you from the server, but that is okay. Let's just wait a second here. So our connection has been lost, which is normal here. And then we should be coming back online. Perfect. Because we connected it to it by name, uh, we should be okay. So now if we go ahead and we look at the local server here and we refresh this, we do get assigned by DHCP. So that is perfect. That's what we want. We can still connect to the machine. So we are looking good so far. So now let's go ahead and let's install the Hyper-V role on the server here. So we're going to click on Manage up here. And we're going to click Add Roles and Features. And in here, let me just bring this to the screen here properly. We're going to click on Next here. And we're going to install a role-based or feature-based installation. We are going to select our server, JP Hype 2019 here. And what we are going to do is we are going to select the Hyper-V role. And we are going to leave all the defaults checked, Add Features. And we are going to click on Next for the Features page. We are not going to select anything here. We are just going to go ahead and click on Next here. And now we are going to be setting up our Hyper-V. So we are going to be um, using the Wi-Fi network adapter here. So we are just going to go ahead and give that a check here. And we are going to click on Next. And we are going to click on Next here, just leaving everything default here. And on the default stores, this is where Hyper-V is going to store the configuration files and the hard drive files. You can change these for where you would like them to be saved. If you have a secondary hard drive in your machine, um, you might want to save them there. Whichever hard drive is your biggest. I just have a one terabyte SSD in this um, computer here. So we are just going to leave them as the default. And we are going to click on Next. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to checkbox this restart the destination server automatically if required. And we are just going to say, yes, we want to allow automatic restarts. And we are going to click on install here. Now this is going to install. This is going to take a few minutes. So I will see you when it is complete and it will automatically restart. So I will see you once the server reboots. All right, so we are back online here. So the server is back up. I am connecting to it through the name. Let me just put in the administrator password here. And we should be able to connect here. All right, so here we are with getting the certificate. We're just going to click on yes here. So the server is coming up. So now what we have done, we have renamed the server. We have installed the Hyper-V um, feature and role. I'm pretty sure it's actually just a role, but uh, let's see what we have here now. Uh, so we do have that install still going on here. which is normal. I believe the Hyper-V typically has two reboots to do. So let's just go ahead and let's just wait for this here. All right, so the feature and role is installed now. So we can see that the name of our server is still JPHY 2019. Now we can see here that we do have, instead of Wi-Fi, we have a V Ethernet with our D-Link dongle here. And we do have the IPv4 is assigned by DHCP, so that's OK. So everything should be ready to go now. So if we actually open up 
just zoom out here and let's open up the Hyper-V Manager. There we are. Let me just zoom in here so you guys can see what's going on. So here we have the Hyper-V Manager. We have our hypervisor host here, and then we have our options here on the side for a, a new virtual machine, hard disk or floppy disk. We have import virtual machines. We have our virtual switch manager, which has our virtual switch that we created in the setup here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna create a new virtual machine here because we are gonna be creating our first VM in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on next here. And we are gonna name this JPDIR 2019 for Jacked Programmer Directory Server 2019. We are gonna click on next here. Now you're gonna ask if you want a generation one or a generation two VM. I'm gonna be creating a generation one. If you know for sure that you will only be using generation two, then you could use generation two. Um, but be aware, like if you do um, provide um, like compatibility to older systems, or if you're ever thinking about um, importing this into maybe a previous version of Hyper-V, um, I would suggest generation one. And we are just gonna set up the startup memory to one gig. I'm just gonna leave that there. For the connection, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect that to the virtual switch here. And then for our hard drive, I'm actually just gonna make it to 100 gigs. And then we are gonna select a operating system from a bootable CD or DVD ROM. And what we are gonna do is we're gonna uh, plug in our ISO and we are actually gonna um, put in our ISO here. So let me actually just plug in my external hard drive here to get access to that ISO. So here we are. So I just plugged that in here. So we do have that and we have our ISO and then we have our evaluation version of 2019 here again. So let's put that in there and let's click on next and then click on finish here. And this is gonna create the VM. So it by default gets created in the power state of off. If you just double click on it, it'll open up a window here. And this window will give you the option to start the machine. We are just gonna start it up here. And now this is gonna go through a very similar um, boot up to how we set up our physical machine. So we're just gonna let this load up here. And here we have the setup for Windows Server 2019. So let's just quickly go through this again together. I'm gonna let all the settings to English, United States and a United States keyboard here. And I'm just gonna click on install now. And this is gonna take us to a very similar screen again as our physical setup. Let's just wait for that to appear here. So we're gonna select, again, we are just actually gonna select a standard evaluation this time of a desktop experience. Because this one, we don't really necessarily need a data center. Data centers, if you wanna run um, really more than two instances of Windows on Hyper-V. Um, but then again, if you have any like licensing questions, definitely the Microsoft website is the best place to go uh, because I only know of certain things. So basically what happens with a standard evaluation is you technically get two licenses. Um, you either get one physical host license um, or uh, two VMs. So what you could do is on a standard uh, evaluation or a standard uh, Windows Server is you could install uh, Windows Server 2019 on a physical box, install the Hyper-V um, role on it, and that will not actually use up a license because it is strictly being used as a Hyper-V host. And then you would be allowed to have two instances of Windows Server on that host. So this is basically kind of the setup that we're doing, but we use the data center evaluation uh, because the data center evaluation actually comes with the license of having unlimited 
um, Windows instances with Hyper-V as long as you have the appropriate licenses for it, um, which in our case, we are just using evaluation because this is purely a testing environment, um, which this is actually allowed for. So we are going to just click on the standard evaluation desktop experience. We are going to click on next here. And we are going to accept the terms. And we are going to do again, do a install Windows only. And we are going to do a new here and apply. And this will give us the exact formatting we want. And let's click on next here. And this is going to do the install again of Windows Server 2019. So this is fairly standard, just like our physical setup. It'll take a little while. It'll do a couple reboots and then you will be up and going. It'll ask you for a administrator password and you will put that in. And then in our next video, we will actually be configuring this server to be our domain controller with Active Directory. And then what we will be doing is we will be able to set up other VMs on this Hyper-V host and join it to the domain. So I will see you on the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted when that video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.